Hello, this is Pat Obi at Purdue University Northwest. In this video, I discuss chi-square goodness of fit test, which is a non-parametric test and therefore uses counts or if you like enumerative data to make an inference about some categorical variable. Specific to this type of analysis, we're going to ask the question, is the observed value of that categorical variable different from what we expect? So in that respect, we seek to determine if the observed sample distribution matches or, that is, fits the expected values, hence the term goodness of fit. And as I note here, such tests are non-parametric because they do not rely on estimates of the population parameters such as the population mean and the population variance in order to make an inference about the characteristics of that population. Uh, one other important note, while non-parametric tests are generally less powerful than parametric methods such as ANOVA, t-test for comparison of two populations, they are nonetheless useful when assumptions for the use of parametric tests have not been met and in my view at the minimum they can serve to corroborate findings from the more rigorous parametric statistical methods alright the statement of hypothesis as you can see here is that there is no difference between the observed outcomes and the outcome that is expected. So quickly we go to this example which you can pause the video and read over but this is a customer satisfaction survey of, of priority uh, customers um, in an airline and uh, the ratings range from extremely satisfied to unsatisfied. So this is the Likert scale here and 70 customers were surveyed uh, of which 25 or 35.7 percent of them say that they are extremely satisfied and going down down the scale um, only 6 or 8 points 57 percent of the passengers said they were unsatisfied so now these percentages here are going to be our benchmark going forward because in a recent survey that subsequent to that 130 priority passengers were again surveyed and we see their results right here and we want to find whether there has been a change between how they responded the first time right here and how they now have responded so as you can see the um, statement of hypothesis is going to be that uh, the proportional responses are going to be the same as they were previously. If I go back here, these are the proportional responses, the percentages if you like. And we're going to use those to calculate the expected frequencies because as you can see here, if those proportional responses have not changed, then 35.71% of this new sample of 130 which comes out to be 46 points, about 43 percent, would say that they are right over here, extremely satisfied. And the percentage of those that are going to say that they are unsatisfied is going to be 8.57 percent of this 130. You see the percentage here, hook it up with 130 and you're going to get 11.14. So this red column consists of the expected frequencies determined by multiplying the benchmark per percentages from the previous survey by the sample size. So now the question is, based on these expected frequencies, which is what we should expect to see if nothing has changed, has anything changed? So pursuant to that, we're going to look at the difference between the number of respondents in each category and the expected number of response, uh, respondents um, in each category. So I use that to construct the chi-square statistic. So for example, this first result here is going to be this observed value minus this expected value. You square it and then divide that difference, square difference by the expected number of respon uh, respondents or expected value. So that's how you get this. And in the same way, you calculate the um, 
chi-squared value for each of the uh, categories pursuant to I go back here this chi-square statistic that you see here right so it's the ratio of the square difference between observed and expected and the expected value and then we're gonna sum all of them simple as that that comes out to be 12.42 the question is is this statistically significant to answer the question we're gonna have to go to the F table to look up the critical value so now the degrees of freedom here is k minus 1 where k is the number of response categories and if I go back here you can see there are five of them ranging from extremely satisfied all the way to unsatisfied so five of them so five minus one is four so let's go to the chi-square table right here so four degrees of freedom at the five percent level you chase it right here to the right that's five percent level right there that's that's your guy right there right 9.45 approximately so going back here that's it right there and as you can see this calculated chi-square statistic is greater than this critical value so we're gonna have to reject the null hypothesis alternatively you can also base your conclusion on the difference between the alpha level of 5% and the p-value. To get this p-value you can use the Excel function for chi-square distribution. To do so, let's go right here. So this is our calculated chi-square statistic. This is the degrees of freedom and you have one of two ways to do this. We can use the Excel function which I show right here. So right there I'm gonna type equal chi and as soon as I start typing it out you see right here pop out right double click it and it prompts you for for the chi-square statistic click right here comma prompts you for degrees of freedom click on this guy here close parenthesis and that's your p-value right there the other is to use the Excel table the table that's embedded in the formula tab so click on this formula tab right here and, and actually I'm gonna sit right here right and then next insert function click on that insert function click on this that's your function right there and then OK and for chi-square click on this guy here then for degrees of freedom click right there and while cursor is blinking there click on this and you already see the result right there and right here and if you click OK, it's going to show here as well. Voila, that's it. And ladies and gentlemen, that wraps it up because based on the p-value, which is less than 5%, we reject the null hypothesis and conclude that, there, that at least one of the response outcomes is different from its previous value. Thank you.